Ovid was writing in Rome during the reign of Augustus, at the peak of Roman power. His great work, Metamorphoses, is a poem in 15 books, an encyclopedic collection of stories from Greek and Roman myths which give insight into their understandings of the cosmos, the planet and human nature, all at the mercy of change and fate. He begins with the creation of the universe, I want to speak about bodies changed into new forms. You gods, since you are the ones who alter these and all other things, inspire my attempt and spin out a continuous thread of words from the world's first origins to my own time. Ovid then explores various metamorphoses, revealing much about antiquity, featuring real and mythical animals, often symbols or playing a role in the narrative. Anything seems possible. Jealous Juno transforms Callisto into a bear and later into a constellation. Ovid writes, If trust is only placed in proven things, do you not see that whenever corpses putrefy, due to time or melting heat, they generate tiny creatures? A war horse dug into the earth is the source of hornets and the caterpillars that are accustomed to weave their white cocoons on uncultivated leaves change to a butterfly's form, symbol of the soul. Mud contains the generative seeds of green frogs and generates them without legs, soon giving them legs for swimming, at the same time with hind legs longer than their forelegs so that they are fit to take long hops. He tells a story of the Lycian peasants who denied Latona water and were changed into frogs with green backs, white bellies and swollen throats. They continue to inhabit that same pond and fight. There's no mention of a tadpole's transformation. The great transformation that Ovid doesn't mention is of water, a gas, liquid and solid. And water behaves strangely in its solid state because its particles are less densely packed than in its liquid state, and so ice floats. Microbes alone comprised the first 80% of life's story, and the first ones munched on carbon in a raw sea. Of one trillion species of bacteria, each bacterium employs 10 million chunks of genetic data. Even elemental microbes resist representation. Life is too energized for language, even for science, fit for a miraculous, vulnerable presence. Not just as objects of evolutionary change, but creative agents. The first organism to surprise adding one cell on top of another was a comb jelly or sponge, both living off my shore. Silurian centipedes and millipedes were among the first to land. To get to the Jurassic, we had to get through the Permian, using just one continent, Pangaea, and one sea, Panthalassa. Starting with an ice age so frigid, sea levels dropped by over a hundred meters. And as it warmed, the heart of the continent cast an inhabitable desert. Weird beasts stalk the fringe. Gilled and lunged tetrapods stumbled through the Devonian, evolving from Tiktaalik, who invented our neck 400 million years ago. The earliest vertebrates probably lived like hagfish, then shrew-sized mammals head past T. rex. Which one was stunned by the capacity to feel pain?
We are elated. The evolutionary path leading to humans and cicadas occurred hundreds of millions of years ago. Cicadas as a group have been around since the Triassic, much earlier than the emergence of mammals. They were a very diverse group of insects, but most lineages are extinct. We are left with cicadas which lived with the dinosaurs and one of the newer families which evolved much later. Their lives are extraordinary. After mating, the female makes a slit in the bark of a branch and pushes the eggs down through her long tail as she walks along. She deposits 12 or so in each slit, then moves on a few millimetres to make another slit for more eggs, and so on until several hundred eggs have been laid. The eggs stay in the slits in the bark for weeks and then hatch into miniature cicada called nymphs that fall to the ground and search for cracks and burrow down using large forelegs to shovel soil here, underground, where cicadas spend most of their lives. Invisible for so long and so quiet, using four needle-like stylets to suck sap from plant roots. If ever there was a secret world, this would be it. They spend years underground as nymphs, before emerging as adults to reproduce in a noisy few weeks, seeking a mate. Only males can vibrate a section of abdomen called the timbals to make a noise. They buckle several hundred times a second. Females respond with a quiet but audible flick of their wings, leading the males on to successive sounds. Only if this flick happens at exactly the right time after the male stops vibrating. The largest and noisiest cicadas are greengrocers, double drummers, black princes, razor grinders, red eyes and cherry noses, which emerge along the New South Wales coast usually between Christmas and New Year. Double drummers and greengrocers are some of the noisiest animals in the world, producing up to 120 decibels at close range. I've been deafened in Jagun Nature Reserve. Sometimes there are so many cicadas in the forest that the trees are dripping with cicada urine. There might be around a thousand species in Australia, many yet to be identified. These double drummers in the video are unusual for Australian cicadas as they emerge during the daytime. Ancient Greeks and the Chinese kept cicadas in cages for the pleasure of hearing them sing. But they're hard to keep. They need fresh sap. Here's a song from 2,000 years ago. Come, dear cicadas, chirp to all the grove, the nymphs and pan, a new responsive strain. <laughs> <laughs> 